So today uh, we're going to talk about musical instruments and the components that you'll find on an, most musical instruments. And then we also have a demonstration of a special instrument that I brought. So um, musical instruments typically have a couple of parts that kind of work together to produce a nice musical sound. Um, and I brought two examples of real instruments. And so I want you to take note of three parts of or sort of three steps in the production of a nice musical sound, right, for a trombone. Uh, so for any instrument, actually, the first step is some external force has to put in some energy. And typically, when if it's a real instrument, that external force is going to be a vibration of some sort that gets started. But that vibration typically is not a single frequency simple harmonic motion. It's typically sort of a more chaotic motion that has a lot of different <clears throat> frequencies added together in some complex oscillation. So on a trombone, that input comes with the mouthpiece. When I buzz my lips, um, it's going to produce a rather complicated vibration of the air inside the mouthpiece, which then gets transmitted to the pipes. Okay. So step one is input of energy in sort of a chaotic vibration or with lots of different frequencies of motion added together in the input external force. All right. Step two, once you get that oscillation started, every musical instrument is going to have some kind of a particular shape. And that shape and also the size of that instrument is going to, going to cause the waves that I've started, which go through the air and the trombone, and then they actually bounce off when they reach the other end of this pipe. They reflect, they're partially reflected back into the instrument. And so we can get standing waves, as you've learned. And these standing waves come from constructive interferences. But they only happen if the waves reflecting off of each end uh, are in sync to create the constructive interference. So there's particular frequencies of wave that resonate in this instrument. All right. So the production of a musical sound by an instrument is a process of resonance, producing a standing wave that only happens at certain frequencies. So the multiple frequencies of my complex wave that came in from the mouthpiece, from my blowing and buzzing in my lips, certain frequencies get selected and amplified by the process of resonance. And those are the frequencies that you're going to hear coming out of the trombone. All right? So that's step two, pretty much for any musical instrument. You've got to have some process of resonance that takes the many different frequencies that you put in from your random, randomly oscillating external force and select certain ones to amplify them through the process of resonance. Those are the ones you're going to hear, the, the frequencies that you'll hear. And then the third component of a musical instrument, most of the time, is some part of the instrument that allows the sound to be projected to an audience. So that would be the bell of a trombone. All right. Um, I also brought a uh, guitar just to see the same kind of parts. All right. So the input on a string instrument, guitar in this case, is simply a pluck that you're going to make. When you pluck, the external force that you're making actually kind of causes the string to have a triangular type shape. It's not a perfect sine function you're giving this, right? But that triangular shape can be considered as made up of a bunch of different sine functions of different frequencies. So this is kind of a, a rather complex external force that you're making when you make just a single pluck. But again, the waves that you create having lots of different frequencies on the string in this case. Um, only certain frequencies get the constructive interference, and those are the frequencies of the standing waves on the string, which is the notes you're going to actually hear. All right? And then the, so that's part two of this instrument. Part one is the pluck, your external force. Part two would be um, a resonance process on the string itself, where you get constructive interference to make particular standing waves. And then part three, actually what gets most of the sound out to the audience on a guitar is the box, right? So the string itself doesn't make a very 
pleasing or loud sound, but when you connect it to a box, that box gets vibrating due to the oscillation of the string, and that projects a nice guitar sound. <laughs> 